Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On November 7th, uh, 2011, the Supreme Court is set to hear oral arguments in the case of Zivotofsky versus Hillary Clinton in her capacity as Secretary of State. The facts of this case are uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, in late 2002, the Zivotofskys uh, gave birth to a son in the city of Jerusalem. Both of the parents are U.S. citizens. Uh, and uh, they proceeded to uh, go to the uh, U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv uh, sometime thereafter and requested specifically to have the child's place of birth recorded for, uh, on the passport and consular record of birth abroad uh, as Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, and they were denied this request, uh, and instead the State Department continued its common practice of recording the city uh, uh, of birth only uh, in the case of U.S. citizens born in Jerusalem. In 2002, late 2002, uh, the Congress passed a, uh, an amendment to the uh, Foreign Relations Authorization Act, Section 214, which is entitled uh, United States Policy with Respect to Jerusalem as the Capital of Israel. And what that section purports to do is to require the Secretary of State through its consular and embassy offices to use the designation as Israel for the country of birth uh, for U.S. citizens born in Jerusalem. Uh, so on the one hand here you have a command uh, through a con congressional statute, and on the other hand you have the State Department continuing its, its uh, uh, long-standing practice of recording Jerusalem only uh, because the executive has maintained this, this policy uh, of, uh, that no state has sovereign authority over disputed territory in, in Jerusalem. This case uh, really presents uh, some very fascinating uh, issues uh, that could have some far-reaching implications. The first is, is really about the application and more or less the parameters of the so-called political question doctrine, which is really just a, a rule applied by courts uh, when, it, when the court feels that this is a question that should not be entertained by unelected judges, but is better left to the political branches of government, Congress, and the executive. Uh, the, uh, the other remaining questions, uh, uh, remaining main question is the extent of the presidential uh, 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 power over foreign affairs and particularly uh, the extent of the president's power to recognize foreign states and whether or not that power is exclusive. Um, the way that the parties had framed the, the, that second issue was whether or not Congress had impermissibly infringed the executive's uh, authority over foreign policy. I think the, what's interesting about the case is the potential implications of what this uh, uh, case could mean after, after the court uh, makes a decision. Uh, on, the, on the political question uh, doctrine issue, uh, the, the answer there is I think uh, the court is going to have a chance to define what uh, a political question is. Uh, and, uh, and set more or less set the parameters and give uh, lower courts uh, guidance as to when they should or should not be hearing a case because it's, it is more properly uh, committed to uh, one of the political branches of government. Now, if the court doesn't knock the, 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 the case out on that ground uh, and it does uh, get to the other uh, issue, the in, uh, impermissible infringement by Congress of the executive's authority, this case has the potential to either further solidify the executive branch's uh, authority, sole or exclusive authority over the recognition of foreign states, or it could in fact roll back on that power uh, in favor of a more of a power sharing arrangement between the executive and the Congress.